the Antikythera mechanism. Around Easter of 1900, two catchers carrying sponge divers from Simi on the way back from the coast of North Africa, where they usually dived for sponges, were forced by rough seas to seek landfall on the Antikythera East Coast near the Potamos port. When the storm eased, the sponge divers who dived to a depth of 50 meters to look for sponges on the seabed found themselves before a surprising discovery. A particularly important ancient shipwreck, which was full of amphora and statues, covering an area of approximately 50 meters in length. After removing the arm from a bronze statue as proof of finding the abundant ancient shipwreck, Elias Tatiatis, one of the divers, surfaced and told his captain. The Antiquities salvage operation, which began round the middle of November 1900 under extremely difficult conditions, lasted many months. All in all, 108 objects made of bronze and marble were salvaged from the wreck, mostly statues and statuettes. Some of the marble statues are parts of groups or compositions reconstructing or copying works from the classical era, the 4th century BC and the Hellenistic years. Also clay, glass and silver objects, pieces from the lining of furniture, wooden parts from the ship and other small objects. Among the findings from the wreck were the fragments of the Antikythera mechanism, about which Zvoronos says in the wreck finding detailed list, which he published in 1902. There is a curious finding of a mechanism in bronze, comprised of numerous bronze wheels, much like a contemporary clock. The entire mechanism was contained inside a square compass and was probably related to astronomy. Initial study of the fragments maintained that it was a kind of astrolabe, gimbal, used in navigation. In 1971, History professor Derek de Sola Price from Yale University, in collaboration with nuclear physicist Caracalos, examined the mechanism fragments with X and gamma rays to clarify its operation, while in 1980 he made a gift of the mechanism reconstruction, which was the result of his many years of research. The mechanism is made of a copper and tin alloy bronze and is comprised of a complex system of 32 cog wheels which bear inscriptions related to the zodiac and the months. The system was placed in a wooden case with metal doors on the front and back, bearing inscriptions. A 
According to Price, it was a mechanism for calendar, solar and lunar calculations, a device for setting time based on the movements of the sun, the moon, the relative movements between them, namely the eclipses, and the movements of other known planets of the time. The mechanism, which according to Price dates from around 80 BC, was probably made in the school of Poseidon in Rhodes by an ingenious engineer. While Cicero, who visited Rhodes in 79-78 BC, mentions the fabrication of a similar device by Stoic philosopher Posidonius Apameas. The mechanism design seems to follow the tradition of Archimedes' planetarium and be related to solar clocks. The mechanism operation is based on the use of cogwheels. Despite the fact that the use of cogwheel mechanisms was known in antiquity and Archimedes or Ctesivius are mentioned as the inventors, according to Price, the differential cogwheel system for calculating the difference between two rotations appears for the first time with the Antikythera mechanism. New radiography examinations were carried out at the museum in 1900 and 1991 for the needs of current research, using stereo X-rays at an angle in order to record the cogwheel configuration stereoscopically and also using X-ray linear CT scan. English engineer and mechanism investigator M. Wright presented a different view for the function of the mechanism in a series of articles and made a new reconstruction of the mechanism. A new round of investigation and study into the mechanism began in September 2005 by a group of scientists from the University of Thessaloniki, Athens and Cardiff in collaboration with the museum. During this investigation, besides the four known fragments, fragment E came to light. It bears a multiverse inscription of which the words Timbano and Te Eliki are visible, and the unknown fragment F, which has marine microorganisms on its back and has preserved a piece of wood on its left side, very probably from the frame that helped fit the mechanism inside the wooden case. A large number of other, smaller fragments have been found. Their dimensions range from 0.5 to 8 centimeters, and there are indications that they belong to the mechanism. Many of these fragments bear inscriptions or single letters, but in many cases the inscriptions are now indiscernible, or it was not possible to read them until today. All fragments were then photographed with an innovative digital imaging device, PTM, by Hewlett Packard, which was bought from the US for this purpose and contributed to the re-emergence of almost obliterated texts related to astronomy and elements on the mechanism's surface. The investigation continued with X-raying of all fragments on the state-of-the-art X-Tech Blade Runner CT scanner which revealed for the first time unknown facets of the mechanism's interior structure with its complex cogwheels and axis, as well as the inscriptions, the thickness of which do not exceed one-tenth of a millimeter. According to the first results of the most recent investigation, which is ongoing, the mechanism, which was placed inside a wooden case, consists of 30 cogwheels and includes many astronomy-related inscriptions. Besides its known use as a solar and lunar calendar, it also performed other planetary forecasts. It was possibly manufactured in the second half of the second or the beginning of the first century BC and is one of the most significant achievements of ancient technology.
weights and the long jump. Weights were a basic accessory for the long jump. Made of stone or metal, they were held by the athletes, jumpers, in both hands in order to achieve a better jump. From the painted decoration on ancient vases, we conclude that the jumper swung the weights while running towards the springboard. From where he jumped forward while throwing the weights backwards, and landed with his feet closed. Their size, weight and type varied. Their weight varied from 1,480 kilos to 4,629 kilos and suited the athlete's body type. The heavier weights were not used in the event. They were offerings, such as the Akmatidi's weight, which weighs 4,629 kilos and bears an inscription and was dedicated in Olympia. In the 6th and 5th centuries BC, there were mainly two types in use. The long weights, which had an irregular semicircular shape and were thinner in the middle for the athlete to hold them fast, and the globular ones, which had the shape of half a sphere with a hole at the top for the athlete's fingers. The use of weights was not mandatory, although it seems that it was common because they helped performance. They were often used by athletes as gym equipment to train hands, fingers and arms. This use of the weights was called weight throwing, artirovolia. The Greek word alma, jump, derives from the Greek verb alone, which means I jump, and first appears as an independent event in Homer's Odyssey Ode Thee 129 in the games held in honor of Ulysses on the Phaeacian's island, contemporary Corfu, and can also be seen on the weight of athlete Epenetus end of 6th century BC. Starting from the archaic era, however, it was no longer an independent event. It was typically one of the pentathlon events. The long jump took place much like nowadays in a 50-meter pit filled with soft earth. At one end it had the springboard where athletes trod before jumping. At the spot where the athlete's feet touched the earth in the sand pit after the jump, a mark was placed called Simeo, mark, and the distance from the springboard to the mark was measured with a wooden pole, the cannon. According to Philostratus, the jump was not allowed unless both of the athlete's feet were imprinted in the soft earth. It is not known whether the long jump was single, double or triple, and there is no written testimony regarding any other type of jump, such as our contemporary high jump or the pole vault. As well, the details and regulations of the event are not known to us in exact detail. It is not known, for example, whether athletes ran to gather momentum prior to jumping with the weights or without them. Paintings on vases, however, lead to the conclusion that athletes worked in gymnasia to train for other kinds of jumps, such as with or without momentum, with weights or without. Aegis. The Aegis was an offensive and defensive weapon used by Zeus, which was made from the skin of a Amalthea, the goat that reared him, according to the legend. According to another legend, the god's Aegis, namely his shield, 
was made from the skin of another monster-like goat which had on its back imprinted the head of Medusa Gorgon. Around it, the god of fire and metallurgy who made it illustrated fear, contention, war, and valor. Its circumference was decorated with 100 gold tassels. The goddess Athena's aegis was made either of snake skin or the skin of Gorgon Medusa that had been slain by Perseus who was born of the union between Zeus and Danae, the beautiful princess of Argus. The Aegis bore the head of the Gorgon in the middle. Instead of tresses, it had live snakes, which assisted the goddess each time against her adversaries. This head, the so-called Gorgonio, frightened the adversaries with its fierce and repulsive countenance and repelled evil. That is why many warriors had it on the outside of their shields as a symbol. The goddess threw the edges around her shoulders, covered her chest and part of her bosoms while she let it hang on her back and wrapped her left arm in it, using it as a cuirass. Panathenia. The most important celebration in Athens was the Panathenia, which were held in honor of the goddess Athena, patron of the city. It was initially called Athenia and was religious in character. The Panathenia were officially held in 566-565 BC in the year of eponymous Archon Hippoclides, as determined by the oldest Panathenaic amphora discovered, the so-called Burgon amphora. Since the reorganization of the Panathenia festival, two Panathenia were held. The minor, which were annual, and the major, which were held every four years. The most important part of the festival was the sacrifice and offerings to the goddess statue on the 29th Ecotomveonos on her birthday, in other words, at the end of July. The procession began at the Dipilon Gate and climbed on the Acropolis following the Panathenaic Road. The goddess's embroidered cloak, the main offering to the city's patron, was carried to her sanctuary in the form of a sail on a ship with wheels. The major Panathenae lasted for one week, and during that time there were athletic contests held that were divided in two categories. The first was for the events that were on the Olympic Games schedule, while the other included events that were related to local Athenian traditions. The schedule included equestrian events, chariot races, as well as poetic and musical events. In the first category were the equestrian and unica events. The latter events where athletes participated naked and citizens from various cities could participate, while the second, which included events of virtuosity and synchronized movements, as well as a lighted torch race, was only open to Athenian citizens. Prizes were Panathenaic amphorae, filled with oil from Athena's sacred olive trees, the Moriès. Each Panathenaic amphora contained 36 kilograms of oil on average, so depending on his victories, each winner could win a large number of amphorae, which varied from 30 to 60, according to the event. 
Naturally, a winner could subsequently sell the large quantities of oil he accumulated. Panathenaic M4 A bore a full armed Athena Promachos on the one side, with helmet, shield, aegis, and lance, and on the other, scenes from individual events. Next to the figure of the goddess was the inscription from the Athenian events. The Sphinx The Sphinx, this unworldly but captivating figure, with a woman's head and a winged lion's body, often decorated vases or other vessels, or was an independent offering. According to the legend, she was the daughter of Echidna and Orthrus, or of Chimera and Typhon, and was sister to the Nemean lion. It was believed that this winged monster came from Asia. It was considered a demonic figure, a symbol of death and the netherworld which is why its figure is often encountered on burial monuments, such as the early Attic funerary steles. The Sphinx is mainly known from the legends of Beotia. They said that the goddess Hera sent her to Thebes to punish Laios, its king, or that the god Ares, Mars, sent her to torture the Thebans, or even that she was sent by the god Dionysus or Hades. They imagined her in the Thebes area, seated on a rocky outcrop, from where she would pose a difficult riddle to passing by Thebans. What is it that has two, four, or three legs? It has a voice, is the only one among living creatures that changes its nature. When it walks on three legs, its speed slows down. King Creon had even promised his kingdom to the person who would succeed in solving the riddle. Oedipus, the son of Laius, was the one who solved, answering that this living creature is man. This is how he became king of Thebes and unwittingly married his mother Jocasta, sister of Creon, while the Sphinx died falling from the high rock where she sat.
bronze offerings on the Athenian Acropolis. This statuette, just like most of the other bronze findings from the Athenian Acropolis that are in the National Museum, came from excavations carried out by the Archaeological Society under Panagis Cavadillas in the years 1885-1889. Many of these, from the 6th and early 5th century BC, were discovered on the sacred rock in the so-called Persian landfill, namely the spot when the Athenians devoutly buried them as a sacred remains when returning home winners after their triumph at Plataeus in 479 BC. They found their monuments and the sacred offerings to the goddess Athena destroyed by the Persians. <laughs> 